Hello, and welcome to the Womb Centered Healing Podcast. I'm Sama Morningstar, and I have Christina here with me today. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast, Christina. I would love for you to introduce yourself and share about your work and share a bit about what womb centered healing means to you. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for having me, Sama. Oh, my work is Yoni Steaming. I help women with any type of vaginal issues they may be experiencing or any type of trauma they've had. And we try to clear that with the help of steam and plant medicine. Plant medicine, beautiful, and steam. Mm. Mm. I love it. And so <laughs> would you say that uh, steaming, vaginal steaming, yoni steaming, I call it womb steaming. Womb steaming. Right, there's so many, V steam, different yes. names you might have heard this from this, about this. Uh, would you say that's central to womb-centered healing, both professionally and personally for you? Um, can you repeat that, Sama? Would you say that vaginal steaming or this steaming with plant medicine is central to your both professional and personal practice of womb-centered healing? Absolutely, yes. And I believe that as, as a woman, all of us, we carry everything in our womb, everything. Mm -hmm. And through steaming and other practices, we are able to release any, any issues that we may be experiencing. So why do you think that we carry so much in our wombs? I mean, how do you, I'm sure you do a lot of education, or maybe you don't, but it seems to me that you might do a lot of education with people that come to you for steaming, especially if they're working on um, you know, releasing uh, things besides physical illnesses, right? Or even right. recognize the emotional or spiritual aspects of, of the physical illness, or they might not recognize that. And so right. I wonder, how, how do you explain that we carry everything in our wombs? N not everyone might understand what that means. Right. Hmm. It's, I feel like for me, it's a, it's an all knowing. It's something that it makes sense. And to explain that to somebody to where it, it may not make sense to them. Um, I feel like it's just something that they have to experience. They, once they steam, they have the experience almost every time. So, so I, I don't really know how, how to explain it. It's just something that's felt. Uh -huh. it's, it's inside. So maybe you can share about how you felt that. I imagine you started steaming before you started offering to support other women with steaming. Could you share your about your, say, your first experience with steaming and how you realized, oh my gosh, I was carrying all that stuff in my womb and now it's releasing and whoa, that feels different. Yes, yes. Ooh, I have goosebumps. Uh, so I became interested in vaginal steaming, in womb steaming, uh, when I was, I was driving up north, taking a mama friend of mine up to the mountains to take some pictures of her bump. And I had just experienced a miscarriage, and this was in 2016. And I was, I was a wreck for a good amount of time over that loss. And she had, and I've also experienced a lot of infertility issues. I have a son now who's almost five and we had to do fertility treatments to get him earthside. And I just deep down believed that there was, there was another way. Like I, I could do this without the help of uh, fertility medicine. And she, my friend had mentioned steaming to me. So when we got back from that photo shoot, I got on, I got on Google University and I just started searching. Mm -hmm. And then I found Kelly Garza, the mm -hmm. owner of Steamy Chick. And mm -hmm. I ordered a sauna right away. I did a consultation with her, got my herbs. And 
uh, when it when my sauna arrived, I set up candles and the room was dark and I just sat on this sauna and just really tapped in to my womb and I almost instantly just tears started falling from my eyes and um, it was I just felt relief I felt that all the grief and childhood trauma everything was just kind of loosening up and with the steam and I was paying attention to my womb and my yoni for the first time in a long time like I it was almost like I was shaming her for not being able to produce a baby like why can't you get pregnant it was just constantly telling her that there was something wrong with her mm. instead of having confidence that she knew what what to do so I feel like that makes, uh, it makes a huge difference and it made a huge difference for me. Right. So this practice of steaming that helped you release all this grief, it also helped you somehow to build your confidence in, in your femaleness, in your fertility, in your yoni, in your womb. And it sounds like it helped you to develop a healthier relationship with those parts of yourself. That's a lot for a little bit of a steam to for do. For one steam. Just in one steam, all of that took place. Yeah. So then did you feel from then on after that one steam uh, that, that that was it? There was no more grief? There was no more trauma? Or has that been an ongoing process of building that more and more and releasing more and more? I feel like that was, it, well, that was more of an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely paid attention to what I needed to pay attention to. That's I was able to see where I needed to direct my energy to heal my body from the inside out. Uh, beautiful. So that first steam was like an initiation where it was all spelled out to you. These are the things that you need to pay attention to. And then you could, you could then carry that into the rest of your life and then into subsequent steaming sessions, for example. Exactly. Is that, is that right? And so, um, so can you share about, um, the role of the, the plant medicine? Did you, I know you got your initial set of herbs from Kelly Garza. Have you since started to explore different plants that might have different ways of supporting you in your process? Ooh, that's a great question. Yes, I have. Ooh. And when I did my training with Kelly Garza, I, I was encouraged. It was her and Marcia Lopez. I was encouraged to get to like, just go outside and get to know the plants and, and notice if they felt masculine or feminine. Notice the feelings that arose as I'm touching and spending time with each plant. And I have this particular connection to, I have a small rose, it's not really a bush, it's, all, it's kind of like a tree, but it produces these really small pink roses. And I felt like the emotions that I experienced through that one plant was, um, it was almost, I felt a little sadness from it. And I, it definitely felt very feminine to me. And it was, I think that I, it kind of blew me away that the plants could actually talk to you mm. and give you that, give you that, those answers and those feelings. Wow. So you had an experience of receiving messages from this rose bush. Now, you, when you say the plant could actually talk to you, did it talk to you in words or <laughs> body sensations or emotions or insight? How, what was, what language was this? It was, it was, um, I felt it in my whole body. I felt like it was a, like a message, uh, like a download mm. and I felt 
it was a very gentle message. Mm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so can you articulate some of the messages or some aspect? I mean, can you put that message into words? I'm asking because I've had similar sure. experiences with the same rose bush, actually, with the little. <gasps> you have. And so uh, it's like my best friend out in the garden and it will like reach out and touch me and like pet yes. me and you know when I'm like working in the garden and pulling the weeds under the rose bush in the spring there's a real there's a feeling of connectedness and so I'm curious um, to hear if you've articulated some you know more about the the message that you're receiving from that rose bush so this might sound like completely out there so i use a menstrual cup mm -hmm. during my bleed and i give my i offer my blood back to the earth and i was doing it around that rose bush mm -hmm. so I almost wonder if the if the plant, if she like absorbed the stuff that I was carrying in my womb and it was coming through when I was connecting with her, like as she bloomed or um, gosh, it's so hard to explain like the the feeling. You, it was yeah. like gentle whispers. Uh huh. And and so what was coming through was the. It sounds like the transmutation of whatever you released back into beauty and vitality through the plant. Yes. yes. Uh huh. I but mean, there I, was still a, there was still almost a sadness to her. It's uh -huh. like she matches because uh, now I go out there and she feels super happy and fresh and um, there's less, like there, there's more blooms coming off of mm -hmm. her now. Yes. So I'm wondering if that's, if it changes with me. Sure, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I'll let you know, I have the same practice of giving my menstrual blood, not only to that rose bush, but I have a number of other rose bushes and other plants and herbs in the garden mm -hmm. that, Actually, I've had some of them actually request some of the blood when I wasn't Ooh. giving it to them beforehand. <laughs> and, and so I've had meditations where I would receive messages of, you need to give the blood to this plant this month, and then oh next month gosh. you need to give the blood to this other plant. Uh, because, and my sense of it is, is that we're giving a lot of information about what's going on with us to those plants and it fosters a relationship we're communicating with them on a cellular le level and it yes. fosters the relationship then the the plant develops medicine in its petals and leaves mm -hmm. and in the parts of the plant that we would use that specifically formulated for what ails us and so it sounds like what you're feeling is the plant's emotional support in in feeling your feelings, whatever emotions you're processing with you. So it yeah. almost sounds like plant medicine empathy, which is often what we really need to be to share whatever emotional process we're going through with another, because so many of our emotional uh processes are relational right and right. the beauty of what you're sharing about uh which is helping my practice of this to expand as well is to recognize the emotional uh wisdom of plants that that, right. that that can that relationship is offering us a relational container in order to uh work through that those relational wounds oftentimes and it's a very trustworthy i feel mm -hmm. plan. i mean i feel like they're all not i know and when i relate to a plant i don't feel 
at any risk of being re-traumatized. Whereas when I relate to another human being, there's always that edge of, okay, is there, are their trauma patterns going to, you know, be unconsciously activated at some point. The nicest person in the world that you trust with everything can sometimes yeah. have that moment where some unresolved trauma that they're still processing, you know, mm -hmm. and your unresolved trauma, you know, get into a tangle. Right? <laughs> and so, yes, yes. And so it's always like, okay, are we going to re-traumatize each other? Are we going to be able to avoid that? You just never know, even with right. your closest, most trustworthy friend. And whereas with plants, it's like the closest thing with a rose that you come to that is you accidentally prick your finger and it gets infected. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's not the same kind of thing. And, and so that, that relational safety with the plants, it feels really valuable for all of that. It does. It feels very valuable. And it's, it's wild the even the plants that like fruit bearing plants mm -hmm. a lot of the fruits are they're shaped like whatever organ they are they can heal mm -hmm. they're shaped like that it's like mm -hmm. they're they're talking to us so uh so yeah when you cut open a peach yes there's a yoni right there is a lot of fruits are very lots of fruits uh yoni like because that's the ovaries and the reproductive organs of and a lot of flowers are very yoni like right like an orchid right i mean i not that i would use an orchid in medicine for like yoni steams for womb steams but uh, if you look at that plant i mean there's some where it looks like you can see like the the butt mm -hmm. and then you can see the yoni just completely open right there and some of them it looks like there's like a little blood splattered on on the sides it's crazy yeah <laughs> yeah well and and then you know the way that roses open and blossom are often mm. look very very yoni like very um labia like yes and yes. then and then we have cucumbers and zucchinis <laughs> <laughs> do those look like hmm. <laughs> so so you know all of that is such a beautiful language and relationship and this intimacy that we are fostering with the plants by giving our blood and then receiving the plant medicine through the steam into our yonis, it pretty soon, I mean, I'm in total love with my plants in the garden, which, yes. I mean, ordering herbs from, from, you know, a company that creates vaginal steaming herbs is a great way to start. And I'm so glad that you shared what Kelly Garza and Marcia Lopez shared with you, which is, learn you know create a relationship with the plants yes. because it takes to a whole nother level and yes and it's you have to like for for what they told us to do is to sit with the plant uh, kind of rub it a little bit feel like the any type of tannins um, taste it like really really form a relationship with them and then sit and listen and more than likely they're going to answer you mm -hmm. yeah and the thing with that is uh, what i find because i do guided meditations uh with the spirit realms and and our emotional realms and you know as well where you talk with your spirit guides and all that as well as these types of plant meditations and one thing that gets in people's way oftentimes with that is that they think they're imagining it, whatever yeah. the plant is saying to them or whatever message they're getting from their guides. And what I like to tell people is, yes, you are imagining it and your imagination is exactly the tool you need to be using in this realm of learning and understanding about yourself. We are imagining it. We're imagining our lives. We're imagining the reality that we're living in all the time. And right. that it just, you get to choose what you imagine and that doesn't invalidate anything. Your imagination is a very valuable and valid way of knowing. 
it is and it's almost i mean because it is all the answers that we need are are already here mm -hmm. and i feel like our imagination is like that's that's us like it, it's us it's our thoughts it's the stuff that we um maybe buried like packed away mm -hmm. and stuffed it deep down and then when you give your imagination a chance to come out i feel like it it helps you just really get more in touch with your intuition mm -hmm. Now, some people run into the trouble, run into a little trouble around that because oftentimes our imagination, you know, can run away with us as far as if we're working with a trauma or a difficult emotion that we've held on to, it's very easy to project and imagine that that same trauma or that same difficult circumstance that originally caused us to feel that way, that difficult way, is happening again, even if it's not. And, and so that's one thing that, that I work with, with with my clients, because we can perpetuate through, our, through the shadow of our imagination, right? Where... Mm -hmm. And if we start to recognize, though, that actually our imagination is even being a helpful tool by bringing our attention to that pattern that still needs to be released and healed, however many times that that pattern needs to come back up. And if we can hold um, and have allies like the plant allies and like our community of sisters and you know, like what we're creating here in the womb centric healing temple through this podcast and all of that, where we help, you know, where we might have healing support systems that can help us to sort that out. And then of course our own womb wisdom can help right. us sort that out. The more we practice that releasing of the old in order for the new to flourish, then that, then that helps that process so that you know, I think that's one way, reason why people are worried or are not certain they can trust in their imagination as if they've had that experience. And so yeah, I, that makes perfect sense too. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder if you've had any personal experiences with that sort of sorting out process of like, okay, have I, have I let go of all of this grief or is this another part of this grief that I'm releasing now that's, that's maybe coming up in my relationships that I need to go back to releasing that. So I, I think that, yes, I think I have, I've had to create space and after I've released stuff and, you know, thinking that it's gone and I've gotten rid of it. The reality is most of the times it's for me, it's never truly gone. Mm -hmm. It's, it could always creep back up. And uh, I, I just try to invite as much light in as I possibly can, acknowledge the darkness and still like give, the, give that shadow side a little bit of room to wiggle around in and just keep filling myself with light, whether it be through steaming, meditation, ecstatic dancing, just sisterhood, mm -hmm. family. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. beautiful. And that's kind of exactly what the rose bush does with it too. You know, when we give our blood to the rose bush, you know, that rose bush then turns that into nourishment. Yes. And then even, even if that blood has some old gunk in it, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and it has some emotional quality or energetic quality that we're releasing, that rose bush, the, the soil, Mother Earth composts that for us. Yes. And it becomes the nourishment for the next batch of roses. Right. It's almost like it transforms. Yeah. Once yeah. it's absorbed. Right. And it feels like to me that that process that the rose goes through of being able to um 
with the help of Mother Earth, of course, the soil of breaking it down and, and making it digestible, the component parts of it and giving it the wisdom of information about, you know, what medicine is needed now in the world. Mm. And I, I feel like that is a particularly potent message from the Rose uh, for those of us who then, you know, discover our own healing process and then want to share that with others. Because if we just completely exiled our wounding because we don't want to have anything more to do with it, then we don't necessarily get all that richness of turning it into nourishment that then we can share with others in the beauty of our blooms, right? And, right. So, and so I feel like the rose is teaching us how to not just throw it away and try to get rid of it, but how to compost it and find the wisdom and the gem and the nourishment what we might have learned from that experience and so for example i would love to hear about what what you have sort of distilled as the wisdom from your out of your process of grieving the miscarriage and and other things that you were grieving around that like what's come up the like where the light is in it mm -hmm. is yeah that what you're asking yeah yeah so I feel, I truly feel that every, so I've had three miscarriages within the last couple of years and I, under, upon investigation and working with plant medicine, I have had, I've received messages and lessons from every single loss that I've had. The first one the first miscarriage that I experienced right before I got into steaming, I, before I had the miscarriage, it was, if I, the message I was telling myself was, if I don't have another baby, my life won't be complete. And what I learned from that loss is my life is so complete <laughs> with or without another baby. Oh, our, we have a son that is this beautiful little miracle and our worst case scenario is really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I don't need another child. I would love to have another child and we have so much love to give another child, but my, our son that, that we have currently, he needed us mm -hmm. to himself as long as he has, has mm -hmm. as long as he's had us at mm -hmm. this moment. Mm -hmm. And I, the second miscarriage I had, I believe uh, that was this past year. I believe that, well, once I lost that pregnancy, I got pregnant naturally. Wow. Yeah. So I believe that that lesson was that it was to listen to my womb and to let her know that I'm confident in her and I know, I believe in her and I know she can do this. And she, and we just had to connect more. Mm -hmm. And she showed me, she showed me by mm -hmm. us having a, this surprise pregnancy. And mm -hmm. there was so much healing, even though that one ended up in a loss. It was, that was this past November. And it was, it was almost, I wasn't happy that I, that it was a loss, but it was, it wasn't as hard to go through that one. And the grief wasn't as long because I had this deeper connection with my womb because wow. of it. And that's, and I was, I've been steaming through all of that. So I've had the connection with the plants and I, I haven't actually steamed with the roses in the, in my backyard. I haven't steamed with those ones yet. Uh, but I have, I mean, I've taken the petals and I compost them. So we're, it's, it's being like the cycles happening where mm -hmm. it's still getting ingested and I'm still getting the, the cell memory mm -hmm. just as I'm giving her the, my cell memories. So <laughs> it's just this, for me, it's just this circle. It's a, uh, it just never stops. Mm -hmm. It's evolving constantly. Wow. 
So are you pregnant now? I am not pregnant now. Well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, we're waiting. We're waiting now. We're still practicing. And uh, whatever happens will, will happen. I went on this beautiful women's retreat this past weekend. And we got to spend most of our time in the womb room. Mm -hmm. And these beautiful women who put on the retreat made this, uh, made Mama Yoni out of roses. Mm. And it was delightful. It was such a great experience just to, uh, they did a lot of sound healing and we did some astrology stuff, which I don't know a ton about. So it was really neat to kind of dive into that. And just to know how all of it's connected, they, they're both herbalists. So they had delicious teas that they made and um, they did a cacao ceremony, ecstatic dancing one night. It was, it was incredible. They gathered dirt from the property that we stayed on mm. and they infused it with, with some essential oils. Mm. And we painted our sister's faces with it mm. and just danced our little hearts out all night. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So you're getting some real nourishment uh, for your for your feminine spirit it feels yes and for your womb and yes in that regard and so um you have do you, do you have a womb steaming center where you live we do not have one here in in arizona uh-huh but you yeah. offer this how do you do it when you offer support to women do you get them to purchase their own home setup or what Yes. So on my website, I sell both boxes, herbs, I do consultations and, um, and so they can purchase it and they do it at their own house. Great. Okay. Which is amazing. I feel like it makes a huge oh, difference. Know. And then they have a, a steam plan that's custom tailored for, to fit their needs. So it doesn't alter their, a lot of women don't understand that um, with, the, the herbs make a difference and the steam time and cycle days can affect your menstrual cycle. Uh -huh. It can shorten it. It mm -hmm. can lengthen it. It can cause heavier bleeding mm -hmm. when you're trying to not have heavy bleeding. It's, it's wild. All of the things that, that the steam and the plants can affect. Sure. So it really does help to have a com consultation with an experienced practitioner with, with training. I, I you know, I've seen, Definitely um examples of especially some like steaming v steam spas don't have any awareness of no. that and um and so that's unfortunately why vaginal steaming sometimes gets a bad rap because yes people have a you know varying needs and if there's just one steaming protocol for everyone then people are going to have varying results because of their varying needs that aren't being met and so right. that's why it's really important to learn about that and you know have possibly some support and consultation with someone who's who's put in some time to to study what it's all about and to um, help you formulate a personalized plan so Definitely. Awesome. Yeah. I feel like the, so when we did, when we went through our training, we had to, we started off and we developed a steam plan. So it was like month after month, we had to test out our own plan on ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, and herbs, so we could see how it would alter our cycle. Nice. So it's, uh, I feel like anybody who's gone through at least Kelly Garza's, I don't know if there's any other training I don't out think there, so. but I mean, she's the best of the best. So in my opinion, my humble mm -hmm. opinion, and uh, she, she trained us all well. She has a list of practitioners on her website, which is incredible. And I also, when I do consultations, I ask a list of questions and they're very personal questions. It can definitely expose um, old wounds if, mm -hmm. When, if there's a woman who's been burying um, any type of trauma and like sexual trauma, anything. And uh, when I do the consultation with them, I also let them know that before they start steaming, it's really important. I'm, I'm of course available, 
but I can't be available all the time. So it's important to make sure that if the steaming does dig up like and open up and, and cause any type of um, intense emotional feelings as a purge, um, it's important to have somebody, a practitioner of uh, like a, a therapist or a friend, somebody that they can confide in and, and talk to in case the steam does bring that stuff up. Right. And I would even uh, go so far as to say to, to, if you are having a professional therapist or even a friend or family member to choose wisely about that, because what we're dealing with are somatically held, possibly old, possibly quite strong emotions that have been sort of stuffed in the closet or stuffed in the, the, the storage yes. capacities of our bodies and the steam starts to release that. So it, it, it's good to be careful with whom you choose, someone who's aware of the somatic nature of our emotional um, body and how and who honors that and has skills and abilities to support you in working with that. Whereas I find that oftentimes family members and friends aren't quite always the right person to support us through that because they don't have some basic therapeutic skills necessarily that become quite necessary when we are in a state of of heightened emotional uh, intensity. Uh, so it's really good to have people who have those skills that you've built a, a relationship of trust that you know um, can support you through that so absolutely yeah i agree with you on that one so if someone wanted to um get in touch with you to learn more about your particular approach and and what you're doing with this work um how would they do so so they can email me at info at dust and do.com mm -hmm. or they can go to the website which is dust d-u-s-t and d-e-w Com. Just and do. Thank yes. you. Beautiful. So again, this was Christina. Thank you for joining us today. And I'm Sama Morningstar. If you want to learn more about my work and the Womb Centered Healing Temple, you can go to wombcenteredhealing.com and uh, learn about that as well. And meanwhile, you can listen to this lovely podcast and the other episodes with other interviews. I think uh, we mentioned Marcia Lopez. I interviewed her recently too. So if you heard that interview, I invite you to scroll back and listen to those ones that I did in the past. I even uh, interviewed, oh, but that was for the upcoming summit. I interviewed um, Kristen Gonzalez, the acupuncturist that, Kelly Garza works with in her training programs. So that's coming up uh, for the uh, Embodied Shakti Summit coming up soon. So keep an ear out for announcements for that as well. All right. So thank you all very much for joining us today. And until next time, holding a vision for our womb wisdom to come into full bloom for each of us. All right, that's all for now. Thank you.